Hey guys, hope you're all crispy and crunchy. My name is Serial Matty and welcome back to DDLC Plus, this time with part two of the understanding chapter. Um, last time we got uh, part one done, in which Yuri kind of changed her mind about the literature club at the end. So let's see how that will go, shall we? Hope you're doing fine, by the way. I got a bit hoarse since last time. Uh, but I hope that's okay. Um, I will still do my best at voices. For the first time, Siori is the first to enter the club room. Anxiety courses through her relentlessly. Will Yuri show up today? Sitting at a desk, she stamps her feet in an attempt to calm down. Why am I letting this affect me so much? I'm doing everything I can to make Yuri happy. But my best wasn't good enough. But it was still my best. But I'm letting everyone down. I'm always just a disappointment. So Yuri continues to wrestle with her self-deprecating de self thoughts. Every tiny noise causes her to lift her head in anticipation of Yuri's arrival. Minutes pass and nobody enters the club room. Not Yuri or Monica. Gosh, I'm so late. Why did I offer to help those other students with their work? I'm such a pushover sometimes. It's going to leave such a bad impression on new club members like Yuri if I'm not the first one here. Monica rounds the corner approaching the club room. Uh, that fly is back here. Okay, piss off. My god, I couldn't get that fly out last night and now it's roaming around this room. Why are you still here? Just to suffer. Probably. As she does so... Yuri? Huh? Yuri jumps at the sound of Monica's voice. She's sitting outside the club room against the wall next to the door. Next to the door. Embarrassed, she quickly closes the book she was reading and stands up. Oh gosh, I'm so late. You didn't have to wait outside for me. The door to the club room is open. Uh, it's not... Yuri stammers, unable to explain herself. She peers inside the club room through the win window, then looks away. Actually, I was just... I was wondering if I could help you instead today. Huh? Me? With club publicity stuff? Uh, yes. Monica is utterly confused. Why is Yuri asking this all of a sudden, when she was so eager to spend time with Yuri before? They did not get along after all. Monica looks into the club room herself herself to see Sayori sitting alone inside. Okay. It's kind of a simple job, but I'd be happy for you to tag along. M me too. Monica is worried, but she finds it difficult to insert herself into whatever conflict that may have arisen. It's a little ironic, she realizes, that she could be so conflict avoidant after having been in the debate club. Okay. Let's take a walk together. I just have to make copies of this new fit flyer, then go around to the billboards and replace the old ones with the new ones. Yuri nods and the two set off. Oh, poor Sayori, being all alone in the classroom. Club room. The club classroom. The two walk in silence. Without Sayori, Monica finds it quite difficult to strike up conversation. So, how's everything been going? Ah, uh, fine. That's good. Neither of them follow up with anything more. Monica tenses up and at the stint at the stinted conversation. How the heck does uh, Sayori do it? Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't see you yesterday. I went straight to the computer lab to work on the flyers. Mhm. Mm Sayori told me. What did you two end up doing yesterday? Just some reading. Oh, I'm glad. It's really starting to feel more like a literature club now. Yeah, uh, it's kind of funny. I felt so intimidated at first when I heard about the kind of reading you were into. But you know, it's kind of stupid of me because I'm just intimidated by things I'm not good at. And it's silly to assume that everyone who comes to the club will just have the same interests as me. But it's so cool that you were able to get Sayori into it. It's like the club is working. I'm really happy about that. She's not into it. Huh? She's not into it. And I'm stupid for forcing her, forcing it on her. 
Yuri falls silent again, as if she started her thought but can't figure out how to continue it. Did something happen? <sighs> no, it's just me. I just... Yuri pauses. Hmm? Uh, I'm thinking. A moment passes in silence and Yuri shakes her head. I shouldn't be complaining to, all, to you all of a sudden. Don't be silly. I won't think you're complaining. I just want to make sure you feel welcome. If it's important to that, then you can c tell me anything. Well, I do feel welcome. Too welcome, I guess. It's not an issue with the club. It's just an issue with me. I feel so wrong to inconvenience you with it. Ah, Monica pauses and thinks. Well, what if we put it this way? It's my job as president to understand the needs of the club members, right? We're going to have all kinds of people joining this club, hopefully anyway. And learning about the diverse needs and interests of everyone will help me come up with club activities that everyone can be happy with. That everyone can be happy with? Not just only some people? Of course. I need to be looking out for everyone. Otherwise, what kind of club would it be? I see. Yuri looks a little more relaxed. It signals to Monica that switching from a sympathetic approach to a pragmatic one was a good choice. Each individual truly does have their own needs. Okay. Yuri takes a deep breath. I am a really weird and awkward person. I've accepted that about myself. I just don't know how to, I guess, connect with other people. How is it so easy for everyone else? How do you just make conversation about any arbitrary topic? I can talk for hours about the things that I'm into. Unfortunately, so much that I don't know when to stop. But for anything else, I just have no idea what to say. So, I understand that about myself. I'm just not good with people. I can't help it. So it feels like whenever I'm confronted with a new social situation, I'm either ignored or made fun of, or taken pity on. And Sayori falls into that third category. She... What? Hold on. You're saying that Sayori is taking pity on you? Yuri nods. I just want to be treated like a normal person. If you don't like me or don't connect with my interests, then just tell me. I can accept that and move on. Sayori is too nice to me. I'm so stupid for not realizing that, that she would just go along with whatever I pushed her into. Nobody deserves to push them, uh, put themselves through that kind of discomfort just because, because they pity some weirdo who doesn't know how to make friends. It's the worst feeling. I hate it. Your sharp words cut through the tense air. Somewhere in the middle of the conversation, the two stopped short in the hallway, prior prioritizing the conversation over their original task. Monica looks at Yuri. Yuri only looks down, with her fists clenched. I think... I think you should tell her that. I could never say that to someone's face. It's pathetic. See, Yuri's different. Making people happy is the most important thing to her. I'm sure that's all she's trying to do. So, if you're able to explain to her what makes you happy, then she'll do anything to make it happen. That's the problem. What kind of friendship has one person always trying to cater to the other person's n weird needs? I'm sorry, I'm making myself sound so... No, I think I'm, I'm starting to understand. Monica hesitates to finish her thought out loud. It's something that Sayori would be able to understand better. Or to say better. Sorry. Sayori is someone who will give anyone however much kindness they need in order to smile. But Yuri, who has difficulty accepting kindness must be driving Sayori to be even more assertive in her kindness, further ex exacerbating the matter. Neither person is to blame, but it's an issue that can be resolved without them understanding each other better. Sayori wants to be your friend, I promise that. It's okay for different people to have different needs. I mean, Sayori, she has her own needs too. But good friends work together and can be what they need for each other. You just have to have good communication and talk about it. I don't have good communication. Yuri stops and shakes her head. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. My head is just... 
It's so resistant to everything. I'm... I'm pushing such a kind of person away from me because of it. Yuri pauses to think. I'm so tired of this cycle I'm creating for myself. I think I'm so afraid of people pushing me away that I just push them away first. How thoughtless and immature of me. Yuri takes a deep breath and exhales. I didn't mean for this to turn into a whole venting session, but I understand now that I just need to communicate with her. <laughs> You're totally fine. It's for the club, remember? You're just make helping the club, helping make the club a better place for everyone. Yeah. Yuri falls silent again. She looks like she wants to say something, but she doesn't. Or she does. This this kind of critical thinking is something that I'm really bad at. You know, about people. So, thank you. Anytime. Monica smiles at Yuri. For just a moment, Yuri finds it in herself to meet Monica's gaze, returning a shy smile of her own. Aww. Nice upbringing talk by Monica. Good job, Monica, by the way. Good job for being insecure about yourself, but then still having it in you to encourage people to, I don't know, tackle their issues. Yuri and Monica finished replacing the old flyers with new ones. More accurately, Monica mostly did the whole while Yuri followed along. Oh, did the whole? Did the work? There was a hole in there. Nowhere. But as the club room once again draws near, so does Yuri's confrontation. I can't do this. Yes, you can. It'll be great. Yuri sighs and shakes her head. I'm never going to feel confident enough. I just have to do it. If you don't, if I don't know, if I don't do it now, I never will. Yuri starts toward the door, but then turns to face Monica. You're not just going to wait outside, are you? <laughs> I can take a walk. Want me to get you a coffee or something? Actually. I prefer tea. I like to make my own, though, so please don't worry about it. Although, I suppose that's one downside of reading here in the club rather than at home. I don't get to drink tea while reading. Sorry, I guess it's just that has nothing to do with this. Hmm. You know, now that you mention it, I bet we could, we could get permission to keep stuff uh, for tea at the club room. You can use, like, an electric kettle to heat up water, right? Would that be really be possible? I'll look into it. I think it would be great. Yuri smiles and nods at the thought. Well, I'll be back in a bit. Good luck. Monica waves at Yuri, then turns around and departs down the hallway as Yuri's smile fades once more. A moment of daydreaming about tea isn't enough to save her from the anxiety of the task that lies before her. But it must be done. Taking one more deep breath, Yuri timidly opens the club room door. That was a door impression, and it was the worst one I've ever done. Yuri! Well, wait, hold on, I'm not done yet. So Yuri shuffles a bunch of papers around. Uh, um, Yuri stammers, her words suddenly caught in her throat. At that moment, she realizes how so Yuri has been spending her afternoon. I wasn't expecting you to come today. I was really hoping to make it all the way through the next chapter first. But I got most of it, uh, most of the way through it. And look! So Yuri, so Yuri holds up a sheet of paper. It's a page of, note, of notes beautifully produced with indentations, categories and even color coding. As Yuri sees it, her expression shifts from anxiety to despair. I was afraid you were getting disappointed in me, so I've been trying really hard... Stop. Yuri presses her fist against her forehead. Please, not now. Thanks. Please stop. I can't take this. Yuri? Yuri's voice quivers in shock after uh, having received the exact opposite response she was expecting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So Yuri looks away in guilt. Did I do something wrong? I don't understand, so... If I did something wrong, please tell me. Yuri shakes her head. N no, it's me. I keep putting myself in these situations where people are afraid to treat me normally. If you don't like this kind of reading, it's okay. 
Please just tell me. I don't need to be treated differently just because I'm weird. But I don't treat you differently. I just want to make friends to be happy. Want my friends to be happy. So I thought that if we did something together that you really like... Okay. I don't want your pity. Uh, why did I do that? Yuri sinks to her knees. Her voice squeaks. I am sorry. Tears of guilt and self-loathing begin to stream down her face. This isn't how it was supposed to go. Why is it so hard just to articulate your thoughts? Why do you end up pushing everyone away from you? Yuri's mind pounds with internal accusations as she sh shuts her eyes, unable to face Yuri or the rest of the world. She should leave. She, she, she should leave. Just escape from here before Monica sees her like this, and before Yuri tells Monica what she did. Before Yuri can put any strength into her legs, she feels a warm pair of arms gently wrap around her from behind. The power of hugs. The power of oh my goodness. It's okay. Siyori whispers in a soothing voice. It's okay. It's okay. Overcome by despair, Yuri finds herself unable to protest or pull away from Siyori's kind gesture. My god, look, look at their facial expressions. Like how well they're done. No way. Yuri sniffles, breathing heavily through, the cl through a clenched throat, trying with all her willpower to control herself. I understand. I understand that the things you're feeling in your head are different from the things you're trying to say. I know that must be what you're feeling right now. I promise, I understand that. So, I'll give you as much time as you need. When you're ready, just tell me your feelings and we'll talk about them together, okay? Yuri sniffles again and nods her head. She gives herself a minute to compose her thoughts, then speaks while steadying her voice. I think... I think that I've gotten so used to people being weirded out by me, that it feels like anyone who's nice to me is just doing it out of pity. I'm so horrible with people. So it makes me not want to believe that someone can actually like me for you, for who I am. Like me for who I am. Yuri pauses, but Yuri doesn't interrupt. Rather, she waits for Yuri to continue. I get so excited when I joined the literature club. I thought that was finally my chance to make friends through my interests. Because my interests are the only thing I know how to talk about. It's all I have going for me. But then, whenever I catch myself think, uh, getting overly obsessive in front of other people, it feels like I'm making a fool out of myself. I hate myself for it. Ultimately, I just want to be treated like a normal person. But how am I supposed to expect that when I can't behave like one? I just want to learn how to get along with people and stop ruining things for myself. That's all. Yuri finishes her thoughts, feeling more steady after having gotten them out. So Yuri, who can feel Yuri's, heart, Yuri's breath rise and fall from beneath her arms, realizes as well. Now this is good friendship. Come on. Thank you for helping me understand you a little better. You know, you were so great at helping me while we were reading. So I'll help you with the things that you need to. But I feel like it would just be frustrating for you how uh, with how much patience I require sometimes. <laughs> that sounds kind of familiar. I couldn't stop worrying about that while we're reading. I was so afraid we, uh, you could get frustrated with me, but <laughs> but I would never do that. I did my best to reassure you by mentioning how I have a lot of patience. Yeah, I know, but my irrational fears just won't be quite some uh, won't be quite sometimes. I'm sure it's the same for you, right? Yeah. Irrational fears. Well, you know, there's no way that you could frustrate me because I already like you as the person that you are. 
I know you said you have a hard time believing that, but I promise that it's true. You don't have to be a, a social person for po people to like you. I think you're really considerate in your own way, you know? Worrying so much about people's feelings. We're all kind of weird. It's a literature club. <laughs> but it's the best part that we all, we're all different and we have different interests. Like about the book. I'm reading it because I want to. Pro I promise, that's what I really want. It's a bit of a struggle, but try not to mistake that for me not enjoying it. I mean, we could never discover new things if we didn't try them at first, right? If uh, I want to, uh, I want to learn the reasons that you love it so much. And in the end, if it's not for me, then I can say that. But I'll be glad that I tried it and I learned more about you. Plus, you're like super duper smart, and I want that to rub off on me. <laughs> Yuri fights back a smile at that comment. <laughs> Look at that wavy smile. Already, the heavy atmosphere surrounding her seems to be evaporated through the caress of Sayori's arms. Your hair is so pretty. I always wanted long hair, but I was awful at taking care of it, so I cut it all off. And now it transformed into a steady smile. Yuri's tense attention relaxes. For once, she feels okay just listening, rather than worrying so much about saying the right thing. So Yuri, sensing Yuri's comfort, lets her rest. It must be so difficult for her to feel relaxed around other people. But if the literature club can make it happen, then it's something that she deserves to experience. Oh man, I love these side stories. They're just, they're just like background information. Okay, that kind of um, belittles what it really is. But uh, there is something just so calming and so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Heartwarming, that was it. It's so nice and so heartwarming to see them take care of each other, even though they all have their own problems, even though they all have their own little knacks and stuff, but they're all trying to, to, to get along and to accept each other as the people they are. And that's, that's a good message to take home, I think. Well then, uh, based on my understanding of your feelings, I suppose I wouldn't mind if we were to continue reading. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. But we can stop at any time. If you truly don't like it, please be honest about it. I won't be offended. Of course. I'm not gonna judge anything this early on though. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, and... Um... It's not good to touch people without their consent first. Oh, come on. Come on. She fixed... Fixed you. That's the wrong term. She consoled, uh, consoled you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you com uncomfortable. Oh, you didn't. I mean, I suppose it was kind of nice. I was just saying. I'm back. Monica's back. I haven't seen you, like, at all recently. So Yuri trots over to Monica. Ah, uh, she whispers loudly. Can I hug you? <laughs> sure, Sayori. So Yuri so wraps her arms around Monica. <laughs> oh. She picked that up. She was she was asking for consent. How oh, oh, adorable. Oh yeah, uh, Yuri, it might be good to know. So Yuri can be kind of a hawk monster. Uh, hey, don't call me a monster. Artemis is a monster. If he inherits the kind kingdom, it could spell disaster. <laughs> Yuri laughs. Monica per perplexedly looks between the two of them, then smiles. Well... I'm glad you've been enjoying your reading so far. It's like our first real activity as a literature club. Uh, about that... Well, uh, you've been so patient with exploring my interests. I think that it would be inconsiderate of me not to return a favor to you and learn about the things that you like. Yes! Do you like poetry? Yuri smiles. Let's go! Ah, oh, that's this one done. Oh my god, I feel like they're getting shorter and shorter, but I want more of them. No. Yeah, that was it. Okay, I have to unlock the next ones. 
for next time. Oh, my dead cold heart is melting. It's... No, I'm not that much a monster, trust me. <laughs> oh, man, but it's so fun to go through these side stories. And again, get to know more about their relationships, how they all deal with their own problems, but problems, but also taking care of each other and just too wholesome. All right, before I make this too long, um, thank you guys for watching this episode too. Next time we'll do the next side story. Stay tuned and I'll see you all in the next video.